What factors led to Spain's decision to remain neutral during World War II? Spain's stance in the Second World War fluctuated between complete neutrality and non-belligerence. Neutrality strictly means refraining from supporting or assisting either side in a conflict, whereas non-belligerence more broadly describes a nation or individual not actively participating in a war or conflict, even though they may sympathize with the ideologies of Germany and Italy. Spain didn't completely disregard the events of World War II, despite using its recently ended civil war as a justification for not getting involved. Concluding in the same year that World War II commenced, which was in 1939, the Spanish Civil War had erupted earlier in 1936, entangling the liberal Republican government in conflict with the conservative Nationalist Rebellion. While the Republic received military assistance from the Soviet Union and backing from Mexico, the United Kingdom, the United States and France pursued a policy of non-intervention during the conflict. Nevertheless, they maintained recognition of the Republic as Spain's legitimate government. Despite their respective countries' official stance, some volunteer citizens opted to participate in the war. On the other hand, Italy and Germany chose to back the nationalists under the leadership of General Francisco Franco by supplying tanks to the rebellion. Speaking of tanks, it is worth noting that Franco ascended to power as the new dictator of the nation and was immediately faced with the decision of defining Spain's position in a burgeoning global conflict. Caught in a dilemma between his inclination to appease the Allies and his ideological affinity with the Axis powers, Franco chose to adopt a stance of relative neutrality, albeit leaning towards passive non-belligerence. At the outset, Franco had entertained the possibility of entering the conflict, especially after the collapse of France, and engaged in discussions with German officials on the matter in October 1940. The meeting ultimately proved unsuccessful, as neither leader could come to a satisfactory agreement. The main aim of the summit had been to settle previous disputes, particularly regarding the conditions under which Spain would fully align with the Axis forces. After seven hours of discussions, the Germans were still unsatisfied with Franco's demands, which included the acquisition of certain French territories and economic relief from Germany, as well as measures to address the aftermath of the Spanish Civil War. Following the unsuccessful meeting, the German leader reportedly said to Benito Mussolini, I prefer to have three or four of my own teeth pulled out than speak to that man again, referring, of course, to General Franco of Spain. However, the Germans persisted in their efforts to engage Franco, this time resorting to a letter to aggressively persuade the Spanish dictator to allow passage through Spain for the invasion of the British territory of Gibraltar. Firmly opposed to the proposal, Franco adamantly refused, citing the perceived threat posed by the United Kingdom to Spain's colonies. He asserted that he would not agree to such a risk unless Britain was on the brink of collapse. Despite Germany's attempts to persuade their hesitant ally with a second letter offering grain and other supplies as a bribe, Franco remained unwavering. He was further discouraged by the recent defeats suffered by Italian troops at the hands of British forces in Sorrento and Italian East Africa. The Germans had anticipated that Mussolini might have more success in persuading the Spanish leader. Franco met privately with Mussolini in Bordoghera on February 12, 1941. Despite hopes that the Italian leader could convince Franco to officially enter the war, this plan failed yet again, despite repeated attempts to reach some form of agreement. All that was left was the Protocol of Hende, which Franco referred to in a letter stating, regarding this matter, followed by an extremely ambiguous statement, Your Excellency recalls the terms. However, due to this lack of clarity and precision, he continued, even stating that the protocol in its current form must now be considered obsolete. Essentially, Germany was left without a true ally, while Spain, at best, remained non-belligerent. The only military assistance the Axis powers could claim from Spain was through volunteers who chose to join the war on their own accord.
The loyalty of each Spanish volunteer seemed closely linked to the faction they had supported during the Civil War, with many nationalists siding with the Axis forces and various Republicans aligning with the Allies. However, out of the more than 18,000 nationalist volunteers who chose to support the Axis forces, all had to commit to fighting solely against the Soviet Union on the Eastern Front, avoiding conflict with the Western Allies. This arrangement allowed Franco to show some support for Germany without significantly escalating tensions with the Allied side. In any event, the Spanish volunteers constituted the Blue Division, which underwent training in Germany and, when combined with the Blue Squadron of the Air Force, totaled around 18,100 men. At the Potsdam Conference in July 1945, Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union was enraged by Franco's decision to permit these volunteers to join the war effort and voiced his intention to retaliate. Both Winston Churchill of the United Kingdom and Harry Truman of the United States dismissed the notion of an Allied invasion of Spain and convinced Stalin to enforce a comprehensive trade embargo against the country instead. This trade embargo was just the initial repercussion Spain encountered for its association with the Axis powers, even though the Spanish leader eventually seemed to align more with the Allies. As Germany's impending defeat became more evident, he found himself unable to evade the consequences of his earlier choices. Before his passing in the spring of 1945, American President Franklin Roosevelt had assured Spain that they would not face repercussions from the United Nations for their actions at the beginning of the war. However, to the dismay of the Spaniards, the succeeding president held a stronger grudge. Spain was unable to join the United Nations until 1955, and several countries even withdrew their ambassadors from Spain. However, during the war, the Allies didn't always treat Spain fairly either. They recognized that the country was still grappling with the aftermath of the Civil War, and access to trade and imports was crucial for its recovery. The Allied nations perceived an opportunity in Spain's challenges and decided to exploit them to their advantage. Both the United Kingdom and the United States elected to limit Spain's access to oil and attempted to leverage economic and trade incentives to coerce Franco into compliance, thereby ensuring that his nation remained neutral. Thankfully, Spain had forged a robust alliance with Portugal, enabling it to secure crucial food supplies and prevent a widespread famine. Despite facing economic instability and other obstacles, Spain successfully met Germany's requirements by supplying essential resources like tungsten, which were obtained from mines owned by Germany within Spain. The Allies endeavored to acquire as much of the metal as possible while engaging in diplomatic negotiations with Spain. However, Franco remained steadfast in supplying Germany with tungsten ore until late summer of 1944. Interestingly, Documents unearthed in May 2013 revealed that MI6 had invested a modern equivalent of over $200 million in a plan to dissuade Spain from aligning with the Axis powers. In the end, despite the Allies' efforts to maintain Spain's neutrality, it is understandable that Franco began to lean towards the Western nations, despite the inevitable sanctions that would ensue. Thankfully for Spain, with the onset of the Cold War in 1947, the United States softened its stance towards the country and no longer viewed it as a threat, but rather as an ally against communism. While Franco's vacillating and loosely defined position during World War II may have been imperfect, it was not entirely without merit. The repercussions undoubtedly could have been more severe than those of strict neutrality. However, by fostering relatively amicable relations with both factions and refraining from full engagement in the conflict, Spain succeeded in averting its utter collapse. Had Franco opted to fully align with the Axis powers between the Civil War and World War II, the nation would have faced near devastation. Spain's fortuitous geographical positioning, situated outside the primary theater of war between Allied Russia and Axis Germany, may have spared it from the need to engage in the conflict. 
While neighboring countries were either compelled or chose to participate fully in the war, Spain remained unscathed by bombings or invasions as collateral damage.